Hello, this is Alex on Pangyo Techno Valley Weekly News. Here's the news from the third week of May. First up, Naver to open Naver D2SF at Bundong in its second office building. Naver D2SF, or D2 Startup Factory, announced on the 11th that it has opened Naver 2SF at Bundong, a 140 seat space exclusive for technology startups in Naver's second office building. 1784. In Naver D2SF at Bundong, eight technology startups in primary cooperation with Naver joined as the first tenants. Going forward, Naver and tenant startups will work together in one building and interact more closely and comfortably. There will also be various programs, technology seminars, and meetings with Naver's technology leaders for Naver executives and employees to experience the startups technologies, the services they offer at 1784. Shen yong -ah, CEO of iCrogene, who moved into neighbor D2SF at Bundong, said, we expect to introduce iCrogene's services to experienced neighbor executives and employees to get various feedback and find more opportunities for collaboration. She added, although we have not spent much time here yet, we were able to get inspiration by experiencing the new technologies of 1784, and we are more immersed in our work thanks to the convenient infrastructure. Neighbors D2SF leader Yang Sanghuan said, if D2SF at Kangnam was an outpost for Neighbor to communicate with technology startups, D2SF at Bundong is a cooperative space with technology startups. Neighbor's Technology Testbed 1784 will be a valuable testbed as well as a good reference for startups, he added. Meanwhile, Neighbor D2SF is always recruiting potential tenants for Neighbor 2SF at Bundong. Through its website, in addition to the previous teams in which it has made investments, it will also provide a wide range of support for technology startups that can cooperate and experiment with Neighbor during the occupancy period. In particular, Participants who are ultimately selected for the Campus Technology Startup Contest, which is currently receiving applications from college students who are willing to start their own businesses, will take part in mentoring programs to gain experience and know-how from neighbor developers in D2SF at Boondong. For our next big story, Kakao Mobility to enter air transportation business and form a consortium to develop UAM. Kakao Mobility has launched a consortium to commercialize KUAM with companies in each field of urban air mobility. Kakao Mobility announced on the 11th that it has launched a consortium with five companies including Vertical Aerospace, GS Caltex, and Pablo Air and signed a business agreement to participate and the demonstration project of the Korean version of Urban Air Mobility Grand Challenge, or the KUAMGC. KUAMGC is an empirical project organized by the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure, and Transport to promote the domestic UAM business and establish a public-private cooperation system. With the aim of commercializing UAM in Korea by 2025, Safety and traffic management function tests of aircrafts will be integrated and the first project to verify operating infrastructure and communications relay platforms will be implemented after selecting participants and open air flight demonstrations by 2024. According to the agreement, each company will cooperate in various fields such as establishing the Korean version of UAM standards performing individual demonstrations to accelerate service commercialization, and jointly seeking additional business opportunities related to the UAM industry in the future. Kakao Mobility presents a multimodal mobility vision that encompasses the ground and the sky in consideration of not only people, but also objects, based on know-how in operating the mobility as a service app Kakao T. Britain's Vertical Aerospace is going to manufacture UAM aircrafts to be used in the consortium. LGU Plus provides traffic management systems and telecommunications services for stable operation of UAM, and Jeju Air is in charge of safe and reliable flight services. 
GS Caltex plans to establish UAM Veriport by utilizing gas station networks distributed across the country, including downtown, while Pablo Air plans to establish an integrated UAM operation control system. For our third story, Hungu Tire announces corporate governance charter. Hungu Tire and Technology, or just Hungu Tire, announced on the 10th that it held a board meeting and declared a corporate governance charter that expresses its willingness to practice transparent and sound ESG, or of course, environmental, social, and governance management. Hungu Tire explained that it established an ethical management policy that seeks to promote the interests of all stakeholders, including shareholders, customers, and employees, and protect their rights and interests. The charter includes regulations on the rights and responsibilities of shareholders, the roles and management of the board of directors, the composition of audit organizations, the protection of stakeholders, and disclosure. This information will be posted on the official website and the Financial Supervisory Services electronic disclosure system so that ordinary shareholders can also check it. A spokesperson for Hanguk Tire said, Following the enactment of the charter, we plan to strengthen our status as a leading ESG management company by establishing a sound governance structure based on the board of directors with objectivity and transparency. Hanguk Tire established a separate ESG committee under its board of directors in July of last year. Along with the ESG committee, the board of directors operates an audit committee, an outsider director candidate recommendation committee, a sustainable management committee, and an internal transaction committee. For our final main story of today, CEO of NHN says we'll unveil seven mobile games this year. NHN aims to release seven mobile games this year and to gradually expand marketing globally. Jung Woo Jin, CEO of NHN, explained that mobile online board games have achieved the highest sales since the service was launched thanks to the influence of new content such as Poker Club and original Go Stop regional competition. NHN also announced its global marketing plans for Guns Up Mobile, which was released last month. CEO Jung said, while it is still in its early stages, there are signs that the game is being well received by users in major countries such as the United States and South Korea. Also, the name of a looter shooter game, which is an RPG shooting game, under development was released on the same day. The looter shooter project, now, has been given the official service name as Darkest of Days. NHN also expressed expectations for the proposal of some amendments to the enforcement decree of the Game Industry Promotion Act. CEO Jung predicted that the revision would help boost the competitiveness of the online board game business. According to the gaming industry, the revision includes an increase in the monthly purchase limit of gaming money for online board games. If the amendment is passed, the purchase limit will be raised from 500,000 won to 700,000 won. Online board gaming money rose from 3,000 won to 500,000 won in 2009. And now that wraps up our main stories, it's time for the quick news of the week. Our first story in the quick news segment, OnLab to be selected as an information protection support provider for SMEs. OnLab announced on the 11th that it has been selected as a supplier of security solutions for ICT SME information protection support project in 2022. This support project is organized by the Ministry of Science and ICT and the Korea Internet and Security Agency, or KISA. OnLab will support a total of two product lines and six solutions for this project, which will be divided into two areas, information protection consulting and security solution support and cloud-based security service support. For a second story, Craft on Society for our second story, Crafton subsidiary Rising Wings to issue its first NFT. Crafton subsidiary Rising Wings will release its first picture for profile on its blockchain-based global esports service, Competes. Third story, 
Foster AI Experts, Naver to hold an AI competition in July. Naver is going to foster talented people in artificial intelligence development and planning. Naver announced on the 10th that it will hold an AI competition, Clova AI Rush 2022, in July and start recruiting participants. Outstanding participants will be given a total of 200 million won in prize money, along with a job opportunity. And that's it for the Pongo Techno Valley Weekly News. I'm Alex Sigrist, and I'll see you next week.